So, uh, the motion before the House is this House believes uh, that the time has come for the United States of Europe. Without any further ado, I'd like to call the Prime Minister to open the case for the motion that stands in his name. Thank you. Abraham Lincoln once said that united we stand, but divided we fall. And we see currently, with the economic crisis sweeping across our continent, that we are indeed falling. And that is why we believe that the time has come to make Europe into a unified country. I'm going to give you a couple of reasons for why this is necessary. Basically, the economic crisis we're currently having uh, gives the political union as the only um, option to solve the current crisis. It's the only way out, with the alternative being the breakdown. So I'm going to explain both why this is so, why we have this dichotomy of either moving to political unification or have to you know, give up the current union, and why then giving up the current union would be a bad idea. I'm also going to talk about uh, how it's important, given the dynamics of, the, of sort of how global politics are changing, to make uh, Europe be able to talk with a united voice. So. Currently, we have a monetary union which is not backed by fiscal union. Uh, this is not uh, a tenable situation. So, um, oh, and I should also mention, when it comes to mechanism, we don't think that that is sort of an important issue in the debate. We think that that's uh, quite straightforward. We're going to have sort of something like the US. We're going to have, you know, a legislative. We're going to have an executive. We're going to vote for it democratically. We're not going to have the unelected commissioner's stuff because we don't think that is a pretty good idea. Sure. Uh, no, thank you. So. Point of clarification. Yes. I'm going to have a common army and common foreign policy. Of course. That sort of goes without saying, I think, if we have a unified state. Um, so, basically, currently we have a monetary union which isn't backed by fiscal union. And what does this mean? Well, when you have uh, shocks that hit different countries differently, if one country is in deep recession, uh, if one country is doing very well, they will have a common monetary policy. And this will lead to like the good countries doing too well and the bad countries doing too poorly, right? Because if you have a unified interest rate, that interest rate is going to be very high for countries doing poorly. So it will be expensive to uh, borrow money there, there will be sort of less investment going on, less sort of consumption, and their economy will go even worse. And that's why, you know, typically you will have monetary policy, we want to cut interest rates to, you know, make the economy do well, and then increase it if the economy is doing well to avoid it overheating. And as we've seen in Europe, like Ireland overheated and Greece, you know, went to hell, and that is not working. So what we have currently is that uh, since the multiple is unified, we can't stabilize using that. And that is why we need to do fiscal policy instead. And this is sort of basic economics, I'm assuming being a soccer school of economics in Riga, that you know, everyone will be aware of this. So, so we have to use fiscal policy. This is sort of what the ongoing debate has been about, you know, about Greece. But you want to, what you want to do then is to take like, some kind of government spending and increase spending to boost the economy when it's doing poorly and sort of rein in spending when it's doing well. So you would ideally want to sort of spend a lot of money in, say, Greece and you know, not spend so much money in, I don't know, Germany currently to sort of balance this out. And obviously this requires a common budget. Because if you're just going to give money to, to some countries, they have sort of no incentive to shape up, right? They will just sort of you can just keep on sort of doing stupid things. And that is why we have the, you know, the discussion about changing the treaties and so on to allow, uh, you know, EU to somehow intervene and control the budgets. But we say that, like, just treaty changes isn't enough. This sort of calls for political unification. And the basic idea here is that in order to motivate some countries paying for other countries, you can't phrase it as being that. Because, you know, countries don't want to pay for other countries. That is why we have so, so much conflict going on right now. Within countries, on the other hand, this is quite uncontroversial. Like, all countries have poorer areas, and it's quite accepted that richer areas pay for poorer areas. This happens, I think, you know, you would all know the examples in your own countries. You have areas doing more poorly, the government usually steps in, you know, pays unemployment insurance to, like, unemployed people will be overrepresented in certain areas, and so on. So we're saying that in order to create sort of the political capital to do this, we need political unification. Sir. The alternative here, then, is to sort of to split up, to accept that we can't have the common currency, that we possibly can't have the current union at all. And why is this bad? Well, it's bad for several reasons. First of all, we have, you know, the currency stability. Uh, we have the, the um, ability to sort of compare prices across countries, to know, you know, if I in make an investment and get, get sort of income from another country, I know what currency that will be in, so I don't have to worry about currency fluctuation that might make my profit smaller or bigger than I expected. 
Uh, this leads to sort of traveling being easier, because you can go to another country with the same currency, and you know you don't have to change money and blah blah blah. And this is good because you know it leads to people meeting and having a nice time with each other, like we're having now, even though Latvia doesn't have the euro, so that's a bit of a trouble. Um, it also leads to increased trade, right? Because it's easier to invest in other countries, so it leads to more sort of cross-country specialization and all that stuff that I'm again sure you're all aware of. Why that is good. So, no, thank you. So. Basically, we think that these are all sort of good stuff that comes out of having the common currency and having the common market. And that is why it would be very bad for it to go away. Uh, but furthermore, we think that sort of uh, the EU was fundamentally designed to instill peace. And that is sort of why we ha you know, had it in the first place, and that is why we need to keep it. Because when you have things like trade, when you have things like political cooperation, uh, you have sort of, with kind of coming together all the time and interacting, the risk of war becomes a lot lower. Like, I've met a lot of you now, uh, and I've met a lot of you in sort of different tournaments across Europe. The fact that I can go to Latvia without, you know, a visa or anything means that I will meet more Latvians. That means that I'm a lot less likely to be persuaded by any politician that it's a good idea to go to war with Latvia. And we think this is sort of a very sort of important effect for the EU, because before we had it, we did have quite a lot of wars. But even if we were to sort of, you know, ignore the fact that these things are good to have here right now, there's also the fact that if it breaks down, you have massive negative effects or the fact that it breaks down in itself. Like the new currencies that will be established will be very unstable. And the fact that it sort of broke down because of a lack of cooperation, because of a failure to, to sort of coordinate, would breed resentment. It will lead to conflicts uh, sort of arising from the mere fact that it broke down. So that's why we think a breakdown would be immensely harmful, and which is why we have to take the other route of moving towards political unification. So then the other reason that we think is important here is the global political stage. Because we have a change in dynamic globally in the world. It used to be for quite some time now that we had sort of the US hegemony. But this is changing quite rapidly. We have sort of rising powers that aren't democracies, like China, for instance, who are becoming more and more powerful. And we're saying that in order for European countries to be able to defend their interests on the international stage, we have to move together. Henry Kissinger famously once said that, you know, who do you call if you're going to call Europe? And we're saying, well, now we're going to solve that problem. You're going to be able to call Europe, like the European foreign minister. And we're saying that in this new sort of global climate, being sort of just nice and democratic is not going to cut it. Uh, if you look at how China behaves, it's all about power play. You have to be powerful. Uh, and if you look at how China and say a country like Russia acts on the sort of international stage, they often use the European division to play European countries against each other. And we're saying that in order to stand up against this, we badly sort of need uh, the ability to, to act together. Because if the EU is unified, it is quite a large country. And it will have a sort of a large army, it will have a large GDP, and it will be able to more easily negotiate, say, trade concessions and favorable trade agreements, uh, you know, industrial policy corporations with countries like China, and with that, that is very important. So basically what we're saying here is that the current crisis calls for a solution, and the solution of breaking apart is uh, massively damaging, and the only other alternative is political unification. And my partner will then explain how this political unification will work and be very sort of uh, unproblematic to implement. So for all these reasons, I beg you to propose. Thank you. Thank you for the floor, Mr. Speaker. We believe that the problems of the current European Union have been forced by too much unification. We believe that the uh, steps taken further will only damage uh, the prospects and will simply kill the idea of a united Europe. So, uh, what I've got today? I'll, uh, I'll talk about several things today. First of all, I'll talk about uh, the heterogeneity of the European Union and why do we think that uh, the differences between the states which are going to comprise that new uh, federation uh, will, be uh, will be tremendous and will dis uh, finally kill, uh, why finally kill it. And uh, secondly, I'll talk about why nation states are important and why are they the best ways of uh, solving the problems the population faces. But a lot of rebuttals first. Uh, first of all, we were told that uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, United Europe is the only way out of the economic crisis. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we believe uh, uh, several things in that. Uh, 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 there are several issues about that. First of all, we believe that it will worsen the relationship between the countries ev to even greater extent than it is now. We say that uh, the, the idea that one country is uh, uh, helping another is currently uh, uh, damaging the prospects of the European Union existing at all. We believe that if uh, you can unify these countries, it will be even worse. We believe that uh, the, uh, the people of those countries and the governments of those countries will never be able to uh, to see them as one uh, as one country all of a sudden uh, that uh, uh, was uh, used to be about. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, 30 of them, we believe that even in that case there will be always uh, be a resentment of the, of the uh, poor areas. Like uh, the example Sorry. is, no thank you, uh, is Germany uh, where even if it's being uh, one nation state, even if speaking the same language and uh, having the same national identity, there are still tensions bet uh, and uh, the, uh, the political detest of uh, the poor lands of Germany because uh, uh, the, uh, th those who are uh, living in the western areas feel Sorry. that uh, 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 the ones in, uh, in the, east, uh, the eastern uh, parts of Germany are, are now simply uh, uh, sucking all their budget. Uh, what we also believe uh, is that uh, there, will, there will be no uh, perception of a, a common country. <coughs> Why so? Uh, because um, uh, the uh, Europe uh, is uh, too different. Uh, p uh uh, it is still comprises of uh, of uh, different national identities, different nations, different uh, that speak different languages, so that uh, have a different traditions, different cultures, different religions. We believe that in that case uh, they will all, th this identity cannot be broken all of a sudden. For example, you cannot f force people uh, to speak the same uh, language all the time. You cannot uh, force them uh, to give up their traditions or to give up uh, the, the sense of be of belonging uh, uh, to their history. In that way, we, we do not believe that uh, they will uh, they will be able uh, to accept that union. Uh, second, please. Yeah, sure. We can have like a bilingual union like we have English and France diplomatic languages which people can communicate and it's not a problem. We will, uh, we will if it is not possible uh, to communicate uh, uh, in uh, uh, 27 languages. Moreover, we believe it is not uh, possible for all people uh, to uh, interact with each other and uh, uh, to work with uh, the supranational government their life will so fully depend upon. S uh, secondly, they were talking about peace. Uh, they said that, that economic cooperation and monetary and fiscal union are necessary uh, for being peace. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do not have the United States of Europe now. We, we do not have war in Europe. We do not believe that uh, uh, having a, a peaceful uh, relationship is uh, uh, is uh, uh, only determined if you have a federation with a massive authority of a federal government. And finally, they said that it is uh, it uh, will uh, in, uh, that kind of country will be able to pursue global goals. To which we say that different member states of Europe have different goals, and we believe that when it comes to uh, uh, defending democracy and human rights, uh, they all stand together, but uh, they have di uh, different interests, and therefore uh, they behave differently. So, uh, coming to my first point, which is about heterogeneity, we say that uh, uh, Europe is economically different. For example, there are different welfare systems that uh, uh, exist in different countries. Uh, we, uh, we that uh, it is self-evident that their proposal to have a unified budget means that the, uni uh, the welfare system will uh, be unified. That will, all, uh, that will surely not be like the, the, by the population. Why so? Because either you have uh, to have this, uh, the same, if you ha want to have the same payments in all Europe, you either have to raise taxes on Europe, which people will not like, or you'll have to pay le less in some countries, which will also not be liked by the population. We believe that uh, that will lead to uh, as, as, uh, to the separatist movements in, uh, in, in the countries harmed by that. We believe that these countries are more likely to dislike Europe. Uh, what we all also say that uh, 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 this uh, separatism uh, will be especially, uh, 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 especially actual in uh, small states. Why so? Because since the European Union is not going to have a common language in the uh, in the uh, uh, nearest uh, several hundreds of years at least, uh, we don't believe that the ability of those people to interact uh, uh, will be uh, jeopardized. We, don't, uh, we believe that if, you, uh, if your life is fully affected by some government that speaks a language different from yours, your ability to appeal to that government and to influence the decisions is jeopardized. We believe that uh, having representatives in some body far away from your home is not enough for, uh, uh, for you to uh, be part of the uh, democratic process and not uh, uh, enough uh, to influence the life or, or on your country. Um, what we also say that, uh, uh, and I have already touched upon, is the foreign policy. We believe that the, uh, different uh, countries in Europe have different traditions of foreign policy. For, uh, for example, Sweden and Austria, which are part of the European Union, are neutral. Uh, we will, uh, why other countries are part of the NATO. Even the NATO member states were divided on the lines of the Iraq war. We believe that since they are going to be a federal state, you are going to have the same, uh, the common foreign policy, and those people will feel that uh, their interests are not taken into account because uh, there will be the ones who will be dictating, and there will be ones who will have uh, to submit by the decision of uh, the majority, no matter how, what body it, uh, the decision will take. So, uh, why nation states uh, are important? We believe that uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people's ability to interact with the governments of their nation states is, uh, is uh, 
are incomparable with the Europe. We believe that uh, what is necessary for legitimate government is not only elections and representatives, but also uh, 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 continued deliberation of the issues and continu uh, continuous interaction with the government by the people. We believe that if the country is too big and comprises too many people, or if uh, uh, those are so different that they cannot understand each other, we believe that the government cannot do. But we also say that people put more trust uh, in, uh, the, uh, in their comp uh, compatriots running them. First of all, because they believe they come from the same background, they share the same identity and the same culture and the same language. And we also believe that uh, uh, those people who, co uh, who come from their country, uh, they know the life of uh, their population better and uh, they are more able uh, to deal with it uh, practically. So, for the reason that if you want to save the European Union, you need not to push any further. For the reason that it is gone, uh, that the nation states are better solving problems, we beg you to oppose. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about why we need to actively build our future and don't just think that things, changes will come ad hoc, but we need to actually make an effort. And secondly, I'm going to talk a bit about brotherhood and why that is important. Um, but before I do this, I'm going to do a little bit of rebuttal. Uh, we heard the opposition say that we have had too much unification and that's bad, and they've also said that nation states are the best. Um, <clears throat> Well, they're saying that, first of all, when it comes to too much unification, we say, we've pushed, we've done too much and we should push no further. We're saying that, no, we've done too little. And the fact that what we have done has been good, but it doesn't work, we find is obvious. But even if you don't think it's obvious, it's been thoroughly explained by the Prime Minister. The European Union right now is in deep trouble. We don't think we can just carry on with status quo and nothing will happen. We think that is a dichotomy between either falling apart or having a deeper unification. And we think that the deeper unification is better. Um, secondly, you were saying that, oh, if, it's, if you unify, there'll be problems. You, know, you can't have, uh, you have different interests, you'll have different languages, different people wanting different foreign policies. And we say that we see this in countries today, even in, in Sweden, in the US, in Germany, we have different people thinking different things, different people wanting different foreign policies, people even speaking different languages. And we're saying that we're okay with that because we compromise. And there's a reason why we want to compromise on a European level. And also, when it comes specifically to languages, we could impose some sort of thing that if it's 5% speak the language, we can do an official language. Um, something like that, I'm sure we can solve the problem. Um, <clears throat> So what is this thing about cooperation? Well, the, the point is here that we might have different interests, but those interests don't differ as much as compared to other people, other players on the national scenes. Those interests don't differ as much as the, our interests to the Americans, or our interests compared to the Arab world, or to China, or to India. And if we want to make our interests heard on a global sure. scene, we need to be a unified voice, as my partner has said. No, thank you. <clears throat> Secondly, when it comes to welfare and stuff like that, we're saying we can have unity in general and still have differences in the particular. We see that in countries today. We see that in the US, for example. We said we would model this slightly on the US. Uh, and they have different uh, levels of welfare in different states. No, thank you. So what they haven't said here is that uh, why nation states are, are the best. We say nation states change. And they put up the unification of Germany as some sort of the, the obvious reason why this is horrible. Because, you know, unifying Germany was the biggest mistake of history. I mean, <laughs> what we're saying here is that if you ask, if you ask a Western, rich Western German if he's happy that they're unified, he might grumble a bit about paying those lazy Easterners, but he'll still probably be happy that they're unified Germany and not half of his country is part of the Soviet Union. And we're saying that this is <laughs> not really an example in your favor. Um, so, uh, also, lastly, you're saying that the trust will disappear. I won't trust uh, people because the country will be bigger. And we say that this trust, or, or lack of trust, is not as big as the lack of trust right now between nations, because that is a bigger divider than the sort of being a part of an, a whole country. We think that the trust will thus increase between, for example, Swedes and Latvians than it is right now when a national borders divide us. And I'll take you, sir. This economic union you're talking about, this can be achieved by the European Union as the economic union right now. Why does that work then? Why doesn't it work? Have you looked at the European Union right now? Fine, it's a fiscal union, works perfectly. Um, 
yes, I saw you before the meeting that's been happening with the European Union, and they are actually heading towards stronger fiscal uh, policies. The Britain sort of opts out. We think that the point is we need to all go ahead, gather up, and create the United States of Europe. The time has come. <laughs> So what is this? Why this proactive action? Well, this we don't think will happen by itself. Nations, especially unified nations of states, the United States of Europe, that will not happen by itself. We need to build our own future, take it in our own hands. And how will and then they'll say, oh, people might not want this. Well, we don't always think that people want what's best for them. This has happened in um, this is what happens. I'm sorry. What happens is that laws often take precedence to opinion. Laws shape opinion. Many times people are not ready for the change that we later see were quite good. The South and the US were quite opposed and willing to go to war to go against the sort of accepting slave, um, removing slavery. And many people, for example, opposed the civil rights law that Lyndon Johnson imposed in the 60s. These were good policies that were done despite popular opinion. We see it's the same thing here. And they might say, oh, but we'll never consider ourselves to be Europeans part of the USE. Uh, well, we take the example of Texas that was independent, and righteously so, that would then incorporated into the United States of America. And in Texas right now, you will probably all know the stereotype is they're the most patriotic Americans there is. They're the ones who provide, for example, half the soldiers in the US Army. So what we're saying is that the lack of support today does not necessarily mean there will be a lack of support for union at infinite. At infinite. So, what we're saying is that nationalism, when it comes to, when it's founded, obviously it doesn't necessarily exist, but that doesn't mean it cannot be created. We've seen this in the US, we've seen this in Canada, where they have different languages, and we've seen that these are prosperous nations today, even though they are heterogeneous, he not homogenous nations. <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> Lastly, I'd also like to talk about brotherhood. The gains of the EU, and this is something we want to stress here, the main gains have been cooperation between nations, between the nations that used to fight. And this is something we cannot lose. This is something we cannot risk. We cannot say, oh, let's just go on with this fiscal union that's obviously failing, and if it falls apart, well, that's okay. We don't think so. And you might say it's impossible for me to ever consider a Frenchman a citizen of the same society as I am. You might consider that this is an impossible uh, sort of gap to breach. But we said before the EU, many nations were enemies. And we think that the gap to cross from enemy to friend, because most Germans consider Frenchmen friends now, that gap is a greater gap than the gap from friend to brother. And we think that a unified identity as European is not necessarily impossible. Rather, we think it's quite probable if we do create a United States of Europe. We've seen this not just Germany in the 1890s, or I mean 1990s, we've also seen it in Germany in the 1890s. We saw it in Italy. In Italy, first of all, when, that, when Italy was united, none of the people spoke Italian. They all spoke regional dialects, couldn't understand each other. Now they're a patriotic nation. And we think that the brotherhood means that we need to go towards unification, more cooperation, less war. And so for these reasons, for we need to build our future actively, and that brotherhood is a good thing, we beg you to realize that the time has come for the, for the United States of Europe. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe it is a very bad idea to create a common union of uh, uh, European countries today. We believe it's bad for several reasons, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this, obviously. Now, so look, first I'm going to talk about the consequences that this creates, and uh, I'll say that these con consequences are pernicious in that we believe that this is a kind of union that is very, very likely to fall apart after it is formed, which is going to damage the prospects for a future union. We believe that's bad. Secondly, I'm going to talk about sovereignty and why we believe that's very, very important and why we believe that the kind of measure that they are proposing is very, very unjust to many small countries within the EU. 
Uh, and lastly, I'm going to talk about self-determination and why that's important and why we think that there are particular separatist movements in many, many countries that have fought for independence and that are going to react to that adversely. So, uh, the rebuttal first. They have a certain several things today. Firstly, they have a certain that they will need a common fiscal policy in order to solve current crisis. Like, firstly, if that's true, they could just propose common fiscal policy. It was not necessarily evident, like, why we need a full union. Secondly, you do not need to have a common, like, necessarily a common fiscal policy as in uniting all taxes, like, um, in order to solve current economic crisis. Like, there are number, a number of solutions that are uh, different to that. Like, you could guarantee eurobonds on the condition of uh, countries conducting reforms, which is kind of the solution that um, we are moving towards now. Like, we could do conditionality, like IMF does, like, require structural reforms and give credits in tranches. Like, after you have conducted part of the reform, you give, we'll give you another part of credit. Right. Like, we think that the, that deals with the problem of moral hazards, uh, like, fa just fine. And we don't think that, like, the currently this, such a huge problem exists because we have this situation where Greece has already committed to, uh, like, uh, uh, doing reforms, where, like, we have a government in Spain that's very, very committed to doing reforms too, where we have changed government in Italy. Like we see that these countries are already doing the reforms and the approach with conditionality is already working. We don't think we have a problem here and we're like, uh, we think that your union is going to be actively damaged because uh, if Greece loses rule of sovereignty in all areas, it is more likely to pull out of this union and more likely to uh, basically not have to do anything uh, with it. Uh, so uh, what they also say that uh, like... Um, um, mm, several things. Uh, they say that we need a common foreign policy because China um, is on the rise and China, we need to compete with China. Like, firstly, we do not believe that the interests of the countries within the EU are common interests. We believe that they the countries within the EU perceive their interests differently. And one foreign policy means that the population of the countries that, for example, oppose the war in Iraq, if we had uh, one foreign policy, that these populations will be marginalized, that thousands and thousands of people will not have their views heard, that thousands and thousands of people will have their preferences denied and we think that's bad, and we think that the um, fact that the people from this country will have to go to this uh, war against their uh, will, and these countries will have to commit troops to that war, while the population of the country is, is very, very bad. We don't think that's a good thing. We don't think that you, the, every country wants to compete with China, and we don't think that they cannot coordinate the kind of interest that they want to coordinate with the kind of mechani uh, current mechanism that exists. So uh, what they also say that, uh, like, um, Currently, there are differences within the countries today, and therefore it's okay if there are differences with the EU. Like we said, there is a reason we are not proposing the unification of the whole world under one government. Presumably, there is a reason that this motion is about the EU, not about like creating a world government, right? They, they have admitted that, like they think that there is a kind of an affinity within EU, like kind of something common. Like presumably, you know, we need something common in order to have a government. But what we say that we do not have enough of that common in order to create a government in the EU, ladies and gentlemen. We think that nation states are. Special special, and the kind of nation states that have developed in the European Union are special, in that they have a common history within that state, a common history of political interactions within that state, and a common language is very, very important, um, which is spoken uh, within that state. And we say that also there are issues on which you cannot compromise, like as you participate in the war or not, you, can do, you cannot do a go on the middle ground uh, in that case, right? So um, uh, in that case, uh, we do not believe like, um, that um, this poll stands uh, uh, no later. So uh, why do we believe that the consequences of this motion are going to be uh, very, very pernicious. Like, uh, we believe that uh, if you have different welfare systems, you uh, ha and you have to either raise taxes or to uh, reduce welfare, we believe that the kind of things that you have in this case are popular protests, ladies and gentlemen. Well, and if, if, if you have popular protests, that means that there is no political will to sustain the current union, uh, and that means that the union falls apart, which means that there are prospects for future long-term integrations are damaged because there is no political will, and faith in the integration project is lost. Yes? Because you apparently haven't read the news. If one country promises to pay the debt to another country without sort of controlling their budget at all, that doesn't really work. Because that, the other country has no incentive. What we say, what we say in this case that we can't operate on conditional level. We uh, do control their budget to the extent that it is necessary for them to control, uh, to conduct structural reforms, like IMF does. That means that we promise to do certain things, and uh, only if we do certain things that we can, like, uh, can get the next portion of the credit. We believe that this is the kind of thing that works, and you do not need the full political union for that. So, why do we believe that um, sovereignty is very, very important and the kind of measure that they are proposing is unjust? Like, we believe that what currently happens in the EU is that citizens mostly interact politically within other citizens within those nation states. Uh, I think what happens is not this kind of political discourse on the EU like, as a whole. What happens is that uh, uh, predominantly they interact and they follow political events from within their country. Like, no one pays attention to the election of uh, like, parliamentarians to the European Parliament. You pay a lot more attention to what happens 
happens in your own country, because this is what the kind of thing that happens in your own language and the kind of thing that you take an interest in. Now we say that your ability to influence the EU decisions, if you uh, if we implement that model, is going to be marginalized. Why? Because presumably you are going to be outvoted if you are a small state. While uh, under the current model, you can choose what kind of areas of uh, integration you consent to uh, give uh, to like uh, the common decision making. Uh, under their model, you cannot consent. All kinds of areas are going to be taken out of their hands, uh, out of your hands, and you are going to be outvoted. That means that nat nations like Netherlands, like Belgium, have no influence, and they're going to be consistently outvoted. That means that their population has no voice uh, whatsoever. Now, why we, why we think that's important? Like, we, we believe that a national identity is important, that it's important to preserve a national identity. We believe that people have a right to come together and decide the rules that their political community is structured by. We believe that this is the kind of thing that has occurred in many nation states in Europe during the history. We believe that the kind of thing that's valuable, that's the kind of thing that people are used to, and that's the kind of thing that people have an interest in protecting. We believe that's a very tangible interest that we should stand to protect. Uh, we also believe that there are many independence movements like uh, ETA and Basques in Spain, like uh, um, like the Irish, for example. Like, they have fought for their independence. We do not believe that it's okay to curtail that kind of independence. We believe that is going to provoke the kind of resentment that leads to separating, that leads to the pressure on the government to pull out of the union and to destroy the union that you have just found. Uh, um, we believe that uh, there are many kinds of uh, laws that people are um, necessarily interested in protecting, like uh, marriage laws and abortion laws, say, for example, in Ireland. We believe that there's a kind of things that we cannot allow the common legislator to interfere in. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that project is bad. We believe that project is going to collapse. For all these reasons, vote against. Mr. Speaker, the problems of Europe did not start in year 2008. The problems of Europe are not simply problems in terms of economics. We think that Europe is falling and the East is rising. We think that Europe as it is and West as it is is losing more and more power. We think this is a problem. We think that the world actually needs to be fulfilled with our criteria, with our culture, with our form of, of actually world, um, world politics. We think this is actually why Europe should unite. This is what I'm going to talk in my speech. I'm going to tell you about the future of the world, then I'm going to tell you about the politics in the EU, and last of all, I'm going, going to tell you about integration. Before that, I'm going to rebut what the first um, opposition has said. So, first of all, they started off with the idea that different countries have different foreign policies and so on. I would like to ask, what's the, the, what is the difference of that from, the, from, for example, the United States or, for example, France. We think that even in France, people have different interests in terms of foreign policies. But still, France has united foreign policy, and we think that Europe should have that as well. No, thank you. I think that we should have a debate in the EU, and we think that the foreign policies that are common should go through. If this is not true, we think that Europe is not going to get anything at all, because our different opinions are simply going to play each other down. If we are, if we are not united, we are not going to get anything at all. The next point they actually made is something on the lines of common history, because they say that we do not have common history or common identity. We say that actually we do have, first of all, a common history of being Europeans. We have a very large shared culture. But secondly, we say that if we are going to unite, we are going to develop a united culture as well. For example, take a look at France in history. Being a, a Frenchman actually was not a concept until the 17th century, Sir. and before that, no thank you, France was divided into different small states. We think that the, fr the French identity was developed because France was united. If Europe is going to unite, we are still going to have one united culture even more. We think that, the, no thank you, that this, this does not mean that we are going to lose our identities in different cultures. For example, if you take a look at France, then also there are different cultures like, like the Breton culture, no thank you, has still remained. So we think that identity is not a problem. The next point I actually made is, is something on the lines that you are going to pay attention only to issues in your own country uh, and so on. We, see, we, we actually say that, yes, that might be true, but at the same time, you also pay attention to the whole policy of the EU. 
For example, take a look at U.S. Yes, people in the states take a, take a closer look at, at the policies in the states, but also they care about the politics uh, in the whole U.S. And this is actually what matters. If they say that they do not want small states like, for example, Belgium to be downplayed, we think this is actually what, what also has happened in the U.S., but we have balanced mechanisms. Uh, for example, yeah. Rhode Island, no thank you, is also a small state, but because we do have the Senate in the U.S., Rhode Island also has a say, we should have that system in, in the U.S. as well, I think. Yes, yeah. this is all of um, Yes, second. Um, this, uh, uh, my question is that the European Union right now is not working. Why, we already have an economic uh, union. How is your union yes. different yeah, okay, why thanks. is this going to work? I'm going to address this in my second point of constructive. Before that, foreign politics. So what I think is, that, is actually that EU is, is falling very soon. We think that in, for example, 50 years, EU is not going to be a big player in the world anymore, for many reasons. First of all, demographics. We think that our, our population is aging, therefore we are going to lose also our economic potential. This is actually one of the roots of the economic, economic crisis that we have right now. We think that we are going to have less people, while, while the East is going to have more people. We think that the East is going to be richer and richer. We think that we are going to lose our military capability as well, and so on. But at the same time, we think that EU is facing the biggest challenge in its, in its history. We think that Europe is actually facing the biggest challenge that it has ever had. And this is actually, uh, is, is actually um, having in future as well the, the world that we have right now. It is actually having a world that respects human rights and democracy in the future as well. Because we think that we are the sole defenders with the US to Sir? these rights, no thank you, to these values. And we think that these values are actually crucial to us. If we want to have a decent future, we need to have these values. If we are going to have, have a world without democracy, Europe is surely going to crumble as well. No thank you. We are not going to have a life we would like to have ourselves, and we should not have that life for the ones who come after us. We think that Europe should actually go for these values, and we can only do that if we are united. Because if we are not united, no thank you, we, are not, we do not have the power to go through with our agencies. We do not have the power, for example, in the UN to take these conventions um, or get these conventions accepted that we want. We do not, no thank you, we do not have the possibility, for example, to so-called educate China to, to also take our, our values. We think that people are not going to trust us as EU, and this is actually what has happened right now. The, the problem with economics is actually that no one trusts us because we are so divided. If we are going to be united, we are going to be trusted in, in economics. We are also going to be trusted in politics and so on. We, th we think this is very important. Now moving to the second point about uh, policies and politics. So what we think, no thank you, is the problem of EU is, is actually something that comes from the rules of EU. EU is based on consensus and not the majority getting its will. We think that if, it's, if this is going to be true in the future, we are never going to have a functioning EU. We think that the only way EU is going to function is if we are going to have the majority vote that's a, a good vote and a fast vote. We think this actually demands a, a Congress of Europe, a, a Congress of Europe that would make these, these uh, policies and treaties. If we are going to have single countries vetoing and blocking, then we are not going to have um, the overall interest of EU protected. Sir? We think, no, thank you, the actually problems that EU have are actually not in one country anymore because EU is, is so much united in the moment. We think that, for example, the problems with infrastructure, economy, but also healthcare are, are problems of not single countries, but the whole EU, because people do not live in one country anymore, they live in the whole EU and, EU, and therefore they need healthcare in the whole EU as well, and therefore we should have the common common policies. We think that if you're going to have the EU right now, this is not going to function because some country is surely going to veto and you're not going to have an effective or, or meaningful uh, process of deciding. Now moving to the last point, we also think that this is going to help with the integration of the EU. And the, the, and the meaning is basically that if you're, if you're going to be one state, you're going to feel that you, or you're going to perceive that actually your funds are, are go to your state rather than other states. You're going to feel that you are united as Germans, for example, with Greece, because you share the very same state, as, for example, New York and California share the very same state. And also we think that this is going to unite EU as it is. We think that if you're going to have parties that actually cover the whole Europe, you're going to have a discussion that also covers the whole Europe. And therefore you're going to perceive that the problems that, EU, that Europe has are not only, for example, the Greece problems or German problems, they are your problems, and therefore you're going to care more, therefore you're going to be more willing to actually say that EU is important. So on this reason, because we think we need to have our values in future as well. Because we think that, we, that EU right now is flawed from the beginning, and because we think integration is important, please vote proposition. Thank you.
the speaker. There are those debates where it's difficult to find things to say, uh, and then there's debates like here, but you just end up with uh, eight pages full of uh, really weak arguments to refute. But let's get to it. Um, first, you know, there's clearly two debates here, one in the first side and then, then the second proposition. The first proposition basically said that uh, we are in a trouble, deep trouble, and the thing that we have to do is the United States of Europe. They didn't really show us how the United States of Europe is going to solve that problem, because the fiscal problem that we have right now is twofold. Well, mainly it is that markets do not believe that European, some countries in the European Union can deal with the sovereign debt issues. Now, the sovereign debt issues actually aren't that big of sovereign debt issues. For example, Japan has debt to GDP of 200%, while Italy has a lot, a lot lower. Spain, that some people are worried about, has less debt to GDP than the United Kingdom, and people are not as worried about the United Kingdom. The issue here is about trust. The issue here is about institutional capability. And the issue is that we believe, the markets believe that, we, that the EU doesn't have the institutional capability. However, they do have the mechanisms to do so. They're just taking forever to decide it, which I believe they are going to be at the end. So there is an alternative to you know, the end of sovereignty and then doing one EU, and that is twofold. And then there is something that if anyone has read the newspapers and, and, you know, and understood something about it, it's quite easy. Number one, let's take care of the debt issue. So yes, we have to bite the bullet and we have to ha somehow share the, de the debt uh, problem uh, in order to, to get through it. As we are doing in Greece, we have to provide stop gaps also in, in, in other countries, countries that, that have that Currently, their uh, rate of growth doesn't allow them to have a prospect where the debt is going to decrease, such as in Italy. That's a bit we have to bite, bite, but nevertheless, we can do it without uh, foregoing uh, our sovereignty. Number two, we need to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Hence, what we have are debt limits. So it's just going to say that dependent on how the, the business cycle is going, debt cannot go over a certain amount, of, uh, a certain, amount certain percentage, uh, dependent on whether the country is growing or, 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 or uh, receding in the economy. Now, they, what they said, they didn't really explain us to at all why their system works better than, than those. There you go. Uh, getting, getting to the point of what Sten said here, that, uh, well, we need to protect human rights, which is quite interesting in this debate. Uh, but nevertheless, I, I like it. Um, uh, all right, so... You know, it might come as a surprise, but the European Union already uh, coordinates their foreign Sorry. policy. Uh, just a moment. Uh, they, they, not only that, but they have you know, a person for that. So they, before they go to, to any sort of like UN meetings, there is, there is, they first fly together to somewhere, they have wine, cognac, very nice, spend a lot of money, and then they agree what is our policy. European Union pretty much all the time has the same voice. Moreover, if the European Union currently is not just one country and one seat, at, at, for example, at uh, United Nations Security Council, but many seats. So they have one, one uh, stance and many, uh, many numbers behind them, which you wouldn't have then, I take you. So we already have like, things like a debt limit. The problem is, of course, that we can't enforce it on a centralized level. In order to do that in a democratic fashion, we need to have a, a united political federation. Oh, well, thank you very much. We do not have the debt limit. We have a discussion about a debt limit, which has taken us an 18 months. But we haven't implemented how it is going to be. And we should do it, get along with it. And we don't need to throw a baby out with the water just to take care of the problem. All right, let's get to uh, what was else that uh, we were uh, presented with. Oh, uh, Congress of Europe. Uh, you know, actually, that would be kind of nice in a way that, you know, I agree the biggest problem with Europe and also why the United States of Europe wouldn't work is that we are unable to make decisions in a timely fashion. You know, the, the, uh, no. um, uh, the, the Greece issue uh, has been up for 18 months. You know, it is quite obvious that it's not going to go away, but we think, oh, well, we're going to make a, you know... 100 million funds, uh, it's not, uh, and the markets are great one day, oh, plus 4%. You know, it's, it's a weak bust, and oh, shit, that won't work, the numbers don't work. Then they come up, you know, three months later, yes, we're going to have a uh, you know, fund for 200 million, and then the four go on and go on and go. They just need to bite the bullet. It gets more expensive as, as, they, as they keep on going. No, but the problem is they're very bad at making decisions quickly. All right, let's, let's implement Congress of Europe. No, what would happen? Well, theoretically, if, you know, that would mean that we elect uh, our people directly, which means that no small country would have any say in what so. is going to happen. So it is basically just uh, Germany, France, UK, if it's going to be part of Europe, and probably won't be in this case, uh, and maybe, you know, Poland, uh, Spain. 
are going to are going to decide. What it in reality means that people, the countries that actually not only have the population but have the power, which means that we're going to have not United States of Europe, we're going to have the United States of Germany. So uh, you know, uh, the, the, there was a guy that that uh, uh, you know start, didn't start the November movement, but he was pretty early on with it, and his dream is finally going to be realized. <laughs> Uh, we had a similar speech here in the first, uh, first half as well. I'm not sure we want that sort of Europe. All right, let's, let's go on. Uh, where was I? Oh. Maybe I can help Right, you. no, you can't. Uh, you really can't. <laughs> so, all right, so anyway, EU is not USA. If you wanted to get the United States of Germany, it wouldn't work out. Let's go to economics. That's what, something I really love, and it's great to talk about it here as well. So I have two issues here. One is that uh, the economics of the proposal wouldn't work. Uh, because uh, Europe is not the United States of America. What you can do in USA is that, yes, you can do transfers within the, st you know, within the federal union, but uh, there's, there's a thing that those transfers usually won't be permanent because uh, you know, people will move to better jobs. If there's no jobs in Wyoming, but there's jobs in Utah, great state, by the way, uh, then they're going to move to Utah. Why? Because it's easy, you know, it's, it's not, not too far. Uh, also, they speak the same language, and people are used to that. Now, in Europe, we already people can move, but it doesn't work. People, they're, they're, you know, there's a huge unemployment for young people in Spain, but they don't come to Estonia, even though it would be nice to have them there. <laughs> uh, and, you know, there's many reasons be before that, and it just won't happen. Just making, changing EU into, into something else is not going to alleviate that problem. So, we, basically, we have to have permanent transfers, meaning that Germany and, and the Scandinavians kind of have to pay, 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 which is going to lead us to leveling down. Meaning that, that those countries who right now make money, Germans, Scandinavia, etc., have money to put it into education, have money to put it into having a good competitive society, competitive economy, won't be able to do that because the money they earn are going to have to spend away to, to, the, to the countries in the southern, uh, southern part of the Europe uh, where they just spend it on, uh, on well, the good life, really. Um, and uh, even though we would all love that, while still having the economy, we can't do that. Uh, so I beg you to oppose. Thank you. I've been saying this a lot in tournaments this year. I'm glad we have such a clear motion. This motion is not about economy, so the audience is not the board to hell. Uh, and I'm really happy to stand here to sum up this case on the proposition side. What we say is creating a central government, creating a federation, having general elections, is the things that are going to actually help the nations that are currently in the EU. We say this will benefit the political progress on an internal level, it will benefit the international politics, and it will actually stabilize the economy. So the main question in this debate should be that how do we achieve the goals that the EU is currently like unifiedly striving for? So basically, in other words, how does the institutional body fill the instrumental role the best? Whether the current system that the opposition is true hardly defending, or whether we have a more federation kind of thing, right? And we do we find that the actual extension that we brought from the sec Stan told you about, the political decision making and efficiency are the basis of all the efficiency in all other spheres, in international relations and in economy. So that's why I think we should take this debate. I'm going to sum this up in three points. Talking about politics, then a little about how the rest of the world sees us, and then about the economy, I guess. So basically, the first, inter in internal politics. We say the problem currently is that states aren't unified in their agendas, right? We have boycotts, we have stagnation. And in his own speech, like, really well contradicted himself, saying that, you know, the problem we didn't rack soon enough is didn't because we didn't reach an, reach an agreement, right? And that's the problem with Europe. If we think, if we have this centralized government, which is elected by the people, we will not have these, you know, uh, basically national struggles, like which is better, which is, which is worse, but we would just get to the root of the problem and solve it. So therefore, we will have more, more innovation and we wouldn't lag behind and wait too long to solve the problems, right? So basically, we, and this would help in all spheres, in environment, in the actual international races, in economy, in many of the pillars that the already the European Union has as a unified goal that we already finance globally. And the really important thing to stress here is that anything we do in our state already influences us others, right? You know, there's a popular line is that, you know, one economy falls all fall, but like how you run your healthcare system and how you run your basic tax system and how you manage your state also influence how healthier people are, how much they can provide, produce, and this, you know, infrastructure, uh, influence export, imports, and these all are all things that already matter to all the states. 
So we see that we are already basically tied in all sectors, and they haven't given us some, any good reason, besides like there are other methods to not actually go through with this. So also they said that you know some nations would be discriminated. This is you know the funny line that the first up brought in and then just you know quoted basically. But we say polit politics works in a funny way. People want to get elected, right? They reach out to the voters. So we say they will not be discriminated. And they, these you know, underdog states or the poorer states or smaller states have a really, they are a target group for a you know, general representative. You know, it's not that you don't you have to have a party for Estonia, but if we see that you know, term, people who are you know, from the bigger nations say that, yeah, we should do politi policy that uh, you know, benefits us, there's just going to be a political party that's going to say, but all the bordering states, yeah. post south states, they need a voice too, we will give, do this, 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 and this will benefit all of them, and they will get elected. So yeah. we think that political process will work in this case very well. Thank you. Now, if we have these common agendas, and we can make internal political decisions well, right, we can actually see where our economy is going and so on and so forth, we will have international, um, we will have a stronger international stance, because we have firstly unified policies, for instance, we won't have the struggle like, how do we actually get along with Russia, you know, Germany versus the others, whether it's economy or rather rights, we would have just a clear stance, or we will be forced to formulate a clear stance on what we think of things in the world, and how we act to other action, actions from other, you know, places, and therefore, since we have more resource and weight behind a common goal, just like the United States, just because they're a superpower, is their resources and human capital are behind one agenda, then we will have a saying to ensure human rights, and to ensure that all the states that are now under a federation and central government will have their interests met, right? So this is basically what we will achieve on an internal level, the stability and strife, and on the international level we will achieve the actual, that our vote counts, and it's not like France supports and others are like, eh, go. Uh, so if you have one policy, you cannot uh, cater to all uh, represented groups uh, by that policy. Like, either you participate in the war or not. Uh, either you have yeah. relations with other groups. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like parties thank you. will not help. Yeah, Stan dealt with that. All the idea that some states might separate, you know, there are different people, people disagree, people have different backgrounds. That applies to any state. They haven't given us any reason why, like, for instance, the United States, where we have, you know, basically all racial minorities, you know, present there, and we have, like, still a functioning state where people's interests can be met, nobody's bashed, discriminated, or nobody's like, you know, put under the boot, basically. So we can't see the worries in this idea. But now moving on to the point of economy, right? They said that the poor nations will still remain poor. This is interesting. This is another thing Stan gave you, right? This is the, the question is the perception. Yes, we do have policies that are, you know, we have a tied economic policies, but the question is, how do people act when we actually implement these policies? For instance, like the United Kingdom people aren't very happy about the common agricultural policy in some instances, and you know, you know, they're not interested in helping the poor nations out as much as it would actually be beneficial for them, just because the reason that they view them as another state. So we say the perception is really important here. The idea is that it's like currently we have a system where, you know, guys, you have to give us some money to help the stupid poor Greece out again because he messed up, versus if we're a uni unified state and the people have the perception that, you know, basically, if a part of my country is doing bad or if my, one of my sectors is falling, investing in that ensures my own stability. And this just doesn't go for you know, the current crisis system. This goes for a long-term perspective in politi politics making where we would delegate more resources into the poorer states because we see that we see how much they influence us. People would actually see the necessity we, through the general government because we are unified that the resource delegation to many sectors, many you know, the, the, the states, is important to actually ensure their stability in whatever state they're living. In. Also, we say this actually ensures that we have a bigger credibility. The idea that uh, you know that in the current system, which first prop gave you, then we have common in investments and incentives, which actually gives us better resource delegation to the other markets. We saw, and also we wouldn't like be in a place where we would be in a place where we can solve the current problem because like. Because we're in a uh, risk of default, is because like the uh, percentage payback percentages are too high on these states, right? If we would actually have united, uni unified uh, uh, resources to back it up, it would be smaller. We can pay it off, and we will prevent the fact that some other state might exploit the fact that the, we are reluctant on them and you know take too many loans in the future. The main reason I'm here is to say to please come to the Estonian Open. But let's, <laughs> now let's move on to the summary of this debate. I'm going to basically give you three points why you should 
and you definitely have to vote for a side opposition, especially the second opposition in this debate. First of all, I'm going to talk about is this system, the United States of Europe, basically so much different from the status quo? Second of all, uh, I'm going to talk about is this going to be so much different uh, uh, that could we be united without this uh, solution that they're bringing on? And third of all, I'm going to talk about what is the actual solution to the problem we're talking about? Well, let's move on to the first point. Now, this is an interesting, interesting one. What is so different about this, uh, this new system that they're actually proposing to the, uh, so to say, uh, Europe, uh, European Union right now? Well, there will be like, more general politics that the minority countries will have less voices and so on. We, uh, we will have problems with integration and so on. And uh, well, th th these are the major things that, that will be different kind of. But the, the main thing is that if we're talking about economically, the side proposition actually hasn't shown us how the economic differences, uh, differences uh, in the you know, United States of Europe would be so much different from the status quo right now, what the European Union right now is trying to do. Sir. Because they're still uh, trying to s uh, say the same thing, uh, thing to us. That we, yeah, we should have a, like a common bu budget, which will be kind of di divided between the member, uh, members, so to say, counties, or so, so to say, whatever they would be in, the, in this case. But the, the main problem is, like in the United States, as my partner said, that still the counties can make uh, bad decisions. Like right now, Greece has made bad decisions while being a part of the U European Union, which, which is the kind of the same, uh, same status quo. We don't believe that the differences actually have been actually happening, happening, and that their plan would actually destroy these differences uh, of of the, the county, so to say, like Greece, make, making actual uh, actual different and better decisions. Yeah, please go. Surely you must see that if you remove fiscal sovereignty, that essentially means you remove the, the possibility of taking bad fiscal decisions. No, that you is the entire point. No, you do not do not remove these uh, these problems. You still have the same people making the same uh, same decisions. That's that's the main problem with it. You still have the Gre uh, Greeks having the same, uh, same, so to say, government in their county, uh, so to say, and making the same decision, uh, decisions and say, uh, still having the same budget problems. And that's the main problem with it. Now let's talk about, will, uh, will we have actually, uh, uh, will we be, be united still without this? Well, the, uh, basically what the proposition is doing is they are inventing the wheel again. That's the main problem with this. On this point. The, the, the problem with this is that the EU is actually, when we're talking about, the, like in the second half especially, about the foreign policies, and we're, when we're talking about the common voice in the world and so on, and we need to be united to be in a competitive and so on, then that, that is actually what the European Union right now is doing. Sorry. We are having the same foreign policies. We are having, uh, having a uni united bo voice in the Europe. We, uh, we, uh, by doing this, we don't have to give up our sovereignty just because we want to have a, uh, the same voice in the world. Right now, we have the same voice in the world without giving uh, up the sovereignty. We just have some, minor, uh, some problems with the economic system and so, uh, so on. So we believe that the, uh, the United, uh, United States of Europe would, would actually just take away, uh, away our sovereignty. And actually, uh, when talking about the minor countries in Europe, we're also, also taking away their voices to the European U uh, Union, what makes the European Union the European Union of different cultures and different people together. Because when we have the, like, the same voice in under, under their model, that, that actually means that the United States of Europe would become, well, as my partner said, the United States of Germany, because the minor countries just don't have the population, uh, population to actually be a part, a real part of the Union and so on. So we believe that this, this, actually, uh, this actually really infringes upon the rights of the smaller countries in, in this region. No, thank you. So we, we believe that this is a, this is a huge problem. Now, now let's, let's move on to the simplest part of this debate, if there is a simple part in this debate. Let's move on to the solution part. This, this is the part that I, I actually truly enjoy. No, 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 no. Let's talk about what is the solution and what are we trying to solve. We're trying to solve something, something really easy in a society, so to say. Not actually easy. Well, economics is never easy, but so to say, it's still easy. Finish. But no, thank you. 
we're trying to deal with a problem that we have a huge, uh, we, we have a kind of a, a debt in the society, so to say. And that's, that's the problem with, that we're trying to do, that the, the, our economy is not working as it should be working. And, well, this, uh, this, uh, the thing is that in the, their uh, system, again, as I, I told you before, we're just taking away the sovereignty and we're trying to uh, solve the same problems. But the, uh, the problem is that in their model, besides the so fact that we're taking away the sovereignty of, uh, of different, uh, different cultures, uh, we're also actually depriving the nations right now of the opportunities they have. Sir? For example, if we have the United States of Europe, that means that some regions are, uh, inevitably have to focus mainly on uh, the major parts of helping other regions in, the, in this, uh, in this uh, United States of Europe. Uh, for example, right now, it would be that the northern countries would be helping the southern countries. And we see that this is a kind of a huge problem to the society that the northern con uh, countries have to put their money into the, uh, into the south, that they, they themselves cannot actually develop to, thanks to this. And the, 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 so actually the economy and all of this actually would kind of be in a stagnation. Uh, and we believe that this is a huge problem to, uh, to it. Uh, to the European Union. If we want to deal with the debt problem, let's, uh, let's like, maintain the thing that uh, the, most of the countries can still develop and, uh, uh, in themselves and just not uh, give the, uh, all of the money just to uh, uh, help the one, uh, one region in, in, the, in the south, because, which actually can manage itself right, right now even with the new budget, pro budget uh, uh, cuts that they have made. And for these reasons, because we truly believe that this, uh, this isn't the solution, because we leave, believe that this isn't, isn't actually so much different from the status quo, we beg you to oppose, uh, oppose this motion and vote for second on. Thank you very much.